please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to video number one. We're going to talk about the introduction to hashtags. So first things first, I want to make sure that you're in the right mindset. I want you to realize that when you're dealing with social media, it's all about building curiosity in the conversation. And it's not about selling your product or service or getting somebody to take action right away. It's about building a relationship and going from that point. So what I want to do now is give you a quick videos overview of what we're going to to be talking about in this specific video series. This is video one, introduction. Video number two is going to be how to use hashtags for your business. So before you can jump right in, you need to have an idea about, you know, how you can use hashtags to brand your company, how to market your company, and things about your business that you may not have thought about just yet. Then we'll talk about the basics, the fundamentals, like how to create hashtags. Then we're going to talk about researching trending hashtags. So we know which hashtags are getting a lot of traffic. And then we take that one step further and we figure out related hashtags to that main hashtag keyword that we are focusing on. And then in video number six, we're going to focus on hashtags on Twitter, hashtags on Facebook on video, video number seven. Video number eight is going to be about using tools to speed up the process that we talked about in videos one through seven. And that is to how do you find hashtags that are powerful, that are trending and that are doing really, really well without having to do all of this research here. And then of course, if you want to track how your hashtags are doing in terms of how impactful have they been? to your audience, then you can watch video number nine and I'm going to show you a specific tool that you can use to do that. So here's basically how it all works. So basically what you want to do is you want to research trending hashtags in your niche first and foremost. Once you've done the research, then you can brainstorm and plan those specific hashtags around your product and service. Then you can start the conversation, communicate with people and go from that point. Now the question is, what do you need? Well, you need a Facebook account, you need a Twitter account, and you need an idea of your audience. What are their deepest desires? What do they hate? What do they like? Uh, what keeps them up at night? And what is your end goal? Is your end goal to sell a product or service? Is your end goal to get them to sign up for a lead magnet, a freebie, a squeeze page, getting them on a landing page? What is your end goal? And then you can have some money only for the paid tools if you want to speed things up. It's not required. You don't have to do it. Uh, you don't have to use software tools or anything like that. You can get away with not doing it. But just want to make that available to you if you want to go down that route. So with that said, let's move on to video number two. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Welcome to video number two. We're going to talk about how to use hashtags for your business. So first things first, I want to ask you, what are you promoting? Are you promoting a product or service or are you a nonprofit trying to spread your message? And I want to ask you, what are your top 10 to 20 keywords or the different types of jargon that people are using in relation to the area of your product and service. So as you know, every little niche, every little market has their own way of talking. So what I want you to do is think about your product and service right now and just jot down keywords that relate to your product and service, things that people use a lot, for example, as a web designer, some people will use font names or popular font names, CSL, CSS style sheets, and other things like that. So things that only your niche would understand, but popular keywords. Because a lot of people in their own niche will be having their own conversations. They will have their own hashtags. 
and things like that. Don't worry right now about whether those hashtags are being searched or not. Just go ahead and jot that down because we're in the brainstorming process. And once you get out of the brainstorming process, then you can learn the fundamentals. But before you can do that, you need to think about your company and you need to think about your audience. So list it out. The second thing I want you to think about is remove all the keywords, remove all the hashtags. Feel free to pause this video at any time if you need to just jot those words down. Next, I want you to remove the hashtags for just a minute. So before using hashtags in your business, what you need to do is you really need to know the inner mind of your audience. Do you know your audience's demographics? For example, do you have in mind a specific person who might be interested in buying your products and services, what they might look like, and things like that? Because guess what? When you get on social media sites like Facebook and Twitter and other sites, then using this knowledge is going to help you go further than your competitors. If not, I want you to go on to a site called quantcast.com, do some research on your niche, and create a customer profile so that you can hone in on what matters most to your audience. So let's do that right now real quick. So like I said, go to the site quantcast.com, that's Q-U-A-N-T-C-A-S-T.com, and what you need to do is simply enter a keyword that relates to a very, very general part of your market or your niche. Or you can enter a domain name as well. Now, what I found with Quantcast is while it doesn't have, you know, statistics about every single website out there, if you can find a good amount of a list of or keywords that relate to your product and service and enter them here, do that until you actually get some demographic data, which is right here. So this is just traffic data up here and it shows you how many people are visiting. That's not really something that you're interested in right now. What we're interested in now is the demographics. We wanna know, are, is your audience mainly male, female, what age group, kids, no kids, uh, what kind of income, college, what kind of college, no college, a little bit of college, a lot of college, uh, grad school, what kind of ethnicity and race and more. And you can also see stuff like other interests that they might have. So even though they're not necessarily like news might not be related to your product and service, you will know that this type of person is most likely going to be interested in your product itself. So this is golf niche right here. So what we're seeing is in the golf niche, it's obviously dominated by male, mainly 45 to 65 above, no kids, meaning that more likely the kids are out of the house. They have a high income, generally 100,000 or above, basically six figure to seven figure incomes. They have at least college or grad school, and they're mainly Caucasian. So now that you have a better idea of who your demographic is, you can really hone in on your audience. Another little trick you can do is go onto Facebook and go to these groups and just take a look at the people's pictures so that you can see, does this actually match up? And by doing this, this is really going to help you hone in on the proper hashtags, the proper keywords that people are typing in to Twitter and Facebook in their regular day-to-day -day conversation. So remember, the whole idea here is to jump into the conversation, not being saying, hey, hey, I'm a, I got a golf product and go buy my golf product, but hey, check this out. You know, what are your thoughts on this specific strategic golf stroke and this and that you really can disarm people by just being 
you being friendly and not really trying to sell them and thinking about selling later down the road. A lot of us as business folks, we make the mistake of trying to sell up front. And that's a no-no, especially with social media. Okay, so now that you have created your demographic profile, you have a better idea about how to do it. And we use that golf example. I want you to ask yourself, what is going on in their daily lives? to you know, even want to get online on social media sites like Facebook and Twitter. So basically, I want you to put yourself in their shoes to understand what might be going on in their minds. What are their frustrations? What do they like? What do they dislike? So maybe list out the top 10 reasons why they may get online. Maybe they've a typical person in your niche goes to work, they get home, they're frustrated, they need to relax. Uh, maybe they're frustrated about their, their age, their looks, whatever. List out the top five problems that keep them awake at night that they have. List out the top five inner desires that they might have. What news are they interested in? Do they like to hone in on specific TV shows, specific other types of shows and stuff like that because even though it's not directly related to your product and service if they match your demographic profile then most likely they're going to be interested in your product and service so go ahead and list those out before you move on to the next videos please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video thank you very much So in video number three, we're going to talk about how to create hashtags, the basics and different ways that you can use hashtags, the bad examples, as well as the good examples as well. So now that we can understand our business, what we're promoting, keywords that are associated with it and the audience, now we can jump in and talk about the fundamentals. The fundamentals are super easy. So from here on out, it's going to be really, really easy. You're going to realize you can implement this stuff today and right away. So in terms of hashtags, uh, they're not necessarily case sensitive, so you don't have to worry about that. But what we recommend that you do is to use about one to three words in your sentence to keep it short and simple. So one to three words in your hashtag itself. So you got the pound sign, then you got the hashtag. But you don't want to make it too long. Otherwise, it can actually be very, very annoying to people. Another thing, don't keyword stuff. Meaning don't put lots of the same keywords into the same sentence. Otherwise, it's going to really annoy people because you got to think about it. Put yourself in other people's shoes. Make sure that your hashtags and your sentences that contain the hashtags are readable because guess what? If they're not readable then, and you combine it with some sort of direct sell, then think about that. If you saw that yourself, you're probably going to get annoyed like this. Potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Grab it now. Now, obviously, this can be something else, but this is just an example of keyword stuffing. Some people have the idea of saying, okay, I got a cool picture of this service or product or whatever that they might be hashtagging and they're going to keyword stuff. So they're going to put the word, they're going to make it plural, and they're going to put different variations of that word thinking that they're going to get a lot of traffic. But think about that. The traffic, the real human beings that come and see that, they're just going to ignore it because they're going to think that looks annoying. That looks boring. Why do I want to click on that? So you want to make sure that it's interesting. Another thing, some hashtag with many, many words. So remember I said use max probably one to three words in the hashtag itself. And this is not necessarily even the sentence. This could be just one hashtag. So remember you got a hashtag, you can put a word, without a space, so it looks like this. But anytime you put spaces, 
uh, that's the end of the hashtag. So hashtag annoyingly long string of words. Don't do this, okay? This is gonna really annoy people and they're just gonna ignore you and it's gonna hurt your branding. Now, before I talk about doing hashtags the right way and giving you some ideas on how you can approach this, I wanna say be careful what you hashtag. I wanna give you an example here. Can what you hashtag be used against you? Yes, it can. And possibly anything can happen, but you just wanna keep an eye out on the hashtags you use. You wanna think, can this really be used against me in a very, very easy fashion? If it can, what can I do to prevent that or what can I do to combat that? Now, also be careful when you are branding your company with hashtags because people can use it against you. So you wanna be aware of reputation of management. This, that's something that has to be on the back of your mind. I mean, in any case, in any thing besides hashtags, like public places, public message boards, this happens all the time. But do you have a game plan that you can actually combat that? That's what I'm trying to say. McDonald's, for example, use the hashtag McDonald's or McD stories showcasing great stories. So they're like, hey, check out our great stories, hashtag make these stories. But can you imagine what happened next? People who had bad experiences began to include that make these stories hashtag in their Twitter sentence or in their Facebook sentence. But guess what? Whenever somebody hashtag this or looked at the hashtag, in the hashtag feed, they saw the positive stories and the negative stories. So you really have to have a way to combat that. Now, that's obvious that's gonna happen and maybe you could have a person in your company who's dealing primarily with reputation management to respond to those stories and turn them from a negative story to a positive story and do a hashtag on that. So as long as you have a game plan on how to turn a negative to a positive, that's what you really need to do when you hashtag, so just keep that in mind. Now let's talk about some good examples. You can start by asking questions. If you analyze social media comments, you'll notice that statuses that ask questions that engage the viewer are more likely to get more responses, more positive responses and more interaction. And that's what you want. You want people to interact with you. You want them to jump into your conversation. You want to jump into their conversation and vice versa. You want to make it so that it's easy for people to jump right in. So with the MECD stories, not knowing that people would jump right in, that could be an issue. So. If you can think that in the back of your mind, how can I make a hashtag whereas people are gonna jump right in and comment? Whether it's negative or positive, I can turn it around to positive. So you can say something like, how, has anyone tried out the hashtag food dish, whatever that food dish is, over at the restaurant name? So that's an example of a good Hashtag because it asks the question. You're not keyword stuffing. The keywords is about one to three or less than three. So it's about one to two in the hashtag itself. Now, some people also do hashtag has, hashtag anyone, hashtag tried. Don't do that because you're going to attract other people that you don't want to attract. Remember, your goal here is not to get tons and tons of traffic. Your goal here is to get targeted traffic that attracts a certain type of person who has a certain type of mindset. Think about that. If I am attracting someone who has been to this restaurant, more likely they have had experience at this restaurant. They may or may not have this food dish, but they can jump into your conversation and start talking about this targeted topic. Now, if I were to go out and start hashtagging all of these, then I'm gonna get really untargeted responses. So think about that. 
Another good example is let's use Xbox. Xbox game Call of Duty 5. I don't think that's out yet, but it is maybe in the future. Xbox game blank is out. Who is the first person to get on it? So you're tapping into the people who are really excited. They're really big fans. They just got out there and they want to get out there and start blabbing about how great it is that they got first dibs. They were the first people to get it and their opinion is valuable. So you get people conversing here. So you ask them, what do you think of it? So another thing I like to do is just ask them to engage with you. Ask who questions, ask what questions, ask how other types of questions. You can add controversy. Hashtag cannot believe that controversy, whatever that might be. It could be a news story. It could be something major that happened. What are your thoughts on whatever that might be? So you can use controversy in your hashtags. Another thing you can do is piggyback on other people's hashtags. Now, this is a great way to get a lot of targeted traffic. What you do is you find people that are super active on Twitter or Facebook that are hashtagging already. You respond to them and hashtag inside of your response. So you're actually jumping into their conversation, trying to add value and piggybacking on their conversations. But don't forget to add value. With everybody out there, if you add some sort of value consistently on a consistent basis to your hashtags, maybe you hashtag something and you link to your article, you link to your blog, you link to your video, something of value that adds value to that audience or something that people would normally pay for that is free so that you can set yourself apart from everybody else who's just selling, selling, selling. The majority of people are probably selling out there and just people are just ignoring them. So blow everybody else out of the water who is just trying to use hashtags for the wrong reason. So now you know how to use hashtags, the bad ways and the good ways and just how to use them. As you can see, it's very, very simple to do. So with that said, let's actually do some research. Dive right in, find some trending hashtags and related hashtags and things like that. So let's move on to the ne next video. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Welcome to video number four. We're going to talk about researching hashtags. So right now it's just time to do some research to kind of get an idea of what's trending, what's doing well in your specific niche, whatever that might be. And we'll go from there. So first things first, I want to talk about websites that basically show you what is trending. So if you really don't have a specific product or service that you want to promote and you just want to get some ideas first and start doing some brainstorming, there is a specific website called Stat Tweet Sticks. So kind of like statistics, but tweets, sticks. So Stat we sticks. So S T A T W E E S T I C S. It's definitely a tongue twister. But if you go to the site and go to the hashtags tab here, you don't really need to type this in. You're going to see the trending hashtags within uh, the 24 hours, within this week, within this month, within this year, and so forth. And you can actually see what's moving up, what's moving down, what's about the same and what people are talking about basically. So if you want to hone in on, you know, specific games, for example, video games, other things like that, then you can easily do that and get into these little niches. Now, obviously you as a business owner or nonprofit or tr you're trying to get your message out. Most likely you're not really interested in trending hashtags in general. What you're interested in is trending hashtags or hashtags that are widely used within your niche. So what I recommend you do is you go to a website called hashtags.org. 
We're also going to use Twitter, but I just want to show you a few websites you can use first that are free. And all you have to do is simply enter the hashtag right here. So let's say, for example, that I have a company. It's a, a doggy bakery and I cook doggy cakes and cakes specifically for dogs. And I can send them over all around the country for people. So I'm going to type something like dog bakery and see what I get. Now, what I like about this tool is it doesn't really give you a whole lot of detail unless you upgrade, but it gives you enough data that you can go to Twitter to finish your research. But basically it shows you kind of a 24 hour trend graph for a specific niche. Now, obviously it took my dog bakery and it turned into a uh, dog, but that's because I need to squish the words together. But anyhow, this is my audience here. And as you can see, what's neat about this is it tells you the estimated tweets per hour for this specific hashtag. So within the 6 p.m. period, which is generally the time people get off work or 5 p.m., that's when the most tweets are happening. Now, of course, they get home, they're at home, they're sleeping, so there's not a lot of activity, and then they go to work, and then, bam, they're at, at work, not doing anything, and they're tweeting again. So that gives me a good idea of my market, because I've already done the demographic research, so now I know what their day looks like. I can compare this with other terms as well. We could say something like puppy and see if we get something similar. And as we can see, it looks like 5 p.m., not a lot of tweets. 7 p.m., there's a lot of tweets. But that could be just a time difference, a time change. But within the matter of just two hours span, that's the highest peak. And it looks like it's not a lot here. And then it's like, bam, around 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. That's when they tweet. So this kind of gives you a analysis of their lifestyle so that you can take the demographic data, take their lifestyle, and you have a better idea of possibly what's going on in their brains. Because Think about it. That's really, really important because if you know what's going on in the brains, it's easier to start or join a conversation that they have already started or that you have started. Now, this tool has related hashtags, but you got to upgrade. I'm going to show you a way around this. There's actually a, another tool that you can use to get related hashtags. So really what I'm after here is just the graph. Now, when I have this data, what I do is I move over to Twitter and Twitter.com is here. And at the top, you can easily just put a pound sign like this, doggy cake, and see what people are talking about in terms of doggy cakes. So, like I said, if I'm a doggy bakery and I want to know if people are interested in this type of stuff, then I can see this. So, okay, doggy cake, homemade, delicious blah, 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 Instagram. So they have actually, actually a picture of the doggy cake. And we can see this right here, uh, cupcakes and bakery, doggy cake, blah, blah, blah. It's actually editable. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going down here and just trying to get an idea of how does doggy cake fit in to the overall Senate structure so I can understand really what's going on in the minds of my audience. So I want you to do the same thing. Look at the sentence structure. How do they use the word uh, in within the whole sentence itself? And look at these pictures along as well. Does it kind of line up with the demographics that you've already done research on? Because this will actually give you a better view on how to reach these types of people just by doing research. And by doing this, you can think, okay, doggy cake is very, very popular. Maybe doggy cupcake is not really that popular. So I'm going to stick with doggy cake. So that's really the goal here is to figure out what's 
hashtags that you want to use and which ones you don't really want to use. So really, there's no right or wrong answer at the moment. The right answer later down the road is to find out which hashtags are being the most and possibly which hashtag conversations have even more conversations going on. We can drop on over to Facebook and do the same thing. Now, as you can see, I went to Facebook and I typed in pound or hashtag doggy cake. And we see a couple responses, not a whole lot. One thing I will say is that you will get more tweets and more responses at Twitter because Twitter really is all about hashtags. Facebook in a way can be, may not be as much, but you still can get some traffic from Facebook. So don't think because you you're not getting a lot of as much as Twitter that you can't get as much with Facebook. Facebook, you might get less, but hey, it's still targeted traffic. And you can move this on to Instagram, other social media sites as well. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. Welcome to video number five. This is how to find related hashtags to the main hashtag keyword. So you know how I talked briefly about this in the previous video and I showed you that there was a specific website that allowed you to see a 24 hour graph so that you kind of could see the day to day lifestyle of your audience. But then when we tried to find related hashtags, it wanted you to upgrade. Well, this specific website allows you to do it for free. And this is an amazing tool. I think you're going to be blown away. So if you take a closer look here, the site is called hashtagify.me. And if you go to this website, you'll be able to see related hashtags. You'll also be able to see top influencers, usage patterns, and in-depth intelligence. But right now we're primarily interested in related hashtags. Now, this is really, really amazing because you can see the inner thoughts of the conversation. So as you know, a conversation has more than one word. But generally speaking, it has a main theme. But with this tool, it allows you to see the main theme plus all the keywords that are associated with that theme in analyzing all these other tweets. So let's stick with the theme that we talked about earlier, which was doggy cake. And let's take a look at the conversation. So what I need to do is put a hashtag doggy cake and see what we get. So what this does is it analyzes a bunch of tweets. It takes the top tweets and it says, okay, doggy cake somehow is related to doggy birthday and celebration. So obviously as real human beings, we know that to be true, right? We know generally somebody gets a doggy cake for some sort of celebration, most likely a doggy birthday. Unfortunately, that's something that we as dog owners do. We get stuff for our dogs, especially if they are kind of our, like our kids. But you can see the conversation going on here. So maybe within doggy cake, I can use doggy birthday and doggy celebration so that people in that niche know that, hey, this guy knows our jargon. So obviously this is pretty obvious, but you know what I'm saying? If you go dig deeper into some sort of other tweets, other niches, you're gonna have your own jargon. So let's dig in. Let's say something like WordPress theme and see what we get. So WordPress theme, Obviously that's going to be different themes, different designs. So we can see that WordPress is in the conversation. Themes is the conversation. These are different types of themes, responsive themes, Photoshop, which is part of the process of getting the theme created. 
to get sliced and diced, if you're familiar with that. Responsive meaning mobile friendly. So if you put your mouse over it, you can actually see the hashtag itself, the popularity, and the correlation from the main root word. So this is 19% similar to this word. This is 7.1% similar to this word in analyzing the top recent tweets. So this graph and data right here is actually taken from a bunch of tweets and it analyzes it and it, then it comes to that conclusion. So that's that and as you can see, very, very powerful. It allows you to figure out what's going on. So you can use this as a brainstorming tool, but also you can use this as a tool to jot these words down and then make sure that you're talking about it too. So this is an idea of what people are talking about. Maybe if you have expertise in this niche, you can jump in and talk about different hashtags here and, and related hashtags. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. So using hashtags over at Twitter is super easy to do. All you have to do is simply go up to the top here. Make sure you do your research first, of course, and that's why we covered that in the previous videos. But assuming you've done your research, what you can do is one thing is if you do, let's say the doggy cake, for example, and I scroll down here and I find, you know, this person here, we can see there's a one retweet here. And we could, you know, click on this and we could respond to it uh, with a hashtag relating to that. And doing that is just simple. It's, it's just putting it into a sentence, putting a hashtag right before it. Just keep in mind that when you place a space right after that hashtag, it's going to either create a new word or you can create a new hashtag. But it's pretty much the same as composing a new tweet and then just placing the hashtag in here. And while you're creating the hashtag, if you type it in, it'll give you some ideas on other hashtags that are being used. So obviously in this tweet, I could target golden retriever puppy and other keywords. So obviously what you wanna do is focus in on hashtagging keywords that are related to the main keyword. So you don't want to hashtag the word awesome or the word, all these other words. You could, if you wanted to, to test it out. Um, but really hashtags are used to categorize conversations and things like that. So doing it on Twitter is super easy to do and you can tweet it. And then you can of course track it with the other tools that we'll talk about later. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. So let's talk about hashtags on Facebook briefly. So basically Facebook hashtags are essentially tags used to sort topics of conversations between users. Now, when it comes to Facebook, there are several ways that you can make use of hashtags on Facebook. You can either click on a hashtag that you see in a post or on a page. And when you click on that, you're going to be able to see more hashtags related to that particular hashtag. So if I click on this one, for example, I'm able to see other hashtags that people have put up. Another thing is I can also search for hashtags by clicking the search box up here, putting the hashtag sign, and then of course putting the hashtag keyword. But you got to realize that only the hashtags that show up in the feed will be hashtags for the public. So if you got your hashtags inside of a post that's only for your friends, then people are not really going to see that hashtag. So just keep that in mind in terms of privacy and everything like that. 
So obviously, let's say for example, you're a local business or you're an online business or you're a nonprofit, uh, the more hashtags that you have, obviously the more visibility that you're potentially going to get. But just keep in mind that you don't want to keyword stuff or just put hashtags for the sake of putting hashtags. You wanna definitely make sure that they are relevant and that they relate to the actual conversations. So in other words, make sure that you include the hashtags in conversations that actually relate to the hashtag. Don't be a spammer. And if you think about that, then, and make it relevant and add value to your conversations, you'll do a lot better. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. So in this particular video, I want to show you a cool tool that allows you to kind of detect the strength of a hashtag. And if you go to write tag, that's R I T E tag.com. Uh, you'll be able to create a free account. They have pricing plans, but you're able to test this out and see if you like it. Uh, you don't have to use this tool, but it definitely speeds things up and it's pretty amazing. But if you take a look down here, as an example, as somebody is composing a tweet, you can see that it tells you how good and how strong a Twitter tweet is. So for example, they have a legend here. The red means that the hashtag has been overused. The blue means that it is good. And the green means that it is great. So if you write a hashtag and you realize that it's overused and there might be too many conversations out there that surround way too many topics that are just scattered and not really honed in on your niche market, then that could be an issue. So this is a really cool tool as you can see here. So I, what I'd suggest you do is just go ahead and create a free account. Uh, what this allows you to do is it also allows you to install their extension onto Google Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. Uh, when you're done with that, you can actually log in and this is what it looks like when you log in. Uh, there's a lot of other things that you can do with this tool, but I primarily wanna focus on you composing a tweet and being able to use hashtags and detecting the strength of the hashtag itself. So I went and clicked on compose tweet here and over to the bottom left-hand corner here, it says compose tweet. So we can write something like, has anyone tried the Hashtag garden salad at the Olive Garden. And we can say something like Atlanta. And it's obviously great. So you want to do something like blue or green would be good. Red's not too good. If it's red, then obviously we can switch that hashtag to something else. So I just wanted to show you this really quick that instead of trying to play the guessing game, you have here something that is a tool that will measure the strength and how good a hashtag really is. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much. So I just want to say congratulations here for reaching the end of this video series. What I want to do now is just to show you a tool that you can use to track hashtags. Now there are other tools out there and if this is not available at the time of you watching this video, I recommend that you go to Google and look for hashtag tracking. But this is one of the ones that are good. And all you need to do is you need to have an account that's connected to Twitter for this to actually work. Uh, Cause if you type in a keyword, it'll ask you to log in to your Twitter account cause it'll analyze uh, your Twitter. So what I did is I logged in 
and I typed in here the term hashtag doggy cake just to fit with the ongoing theme that we've been going on in this video course. And as you can see here, it shows me the estimated reach, which is about 2,382 accounts have been reached in terms of this hashtag keyword here. You can see the exposure in terms of impressions. You can see the activity from the last couple days, about last seven days. We can see the retweets and we can see the tweets. We can see the top contributors, the impressions that she's getting, uh, the contributors here. Uh, we can see some of what the active contributors are. So if we want to dive in and maybe reach out to these specific contributors, and you can see these as possible JV partners that you can partner up with, contact, and just try to see if uh, you can work together. But I really like this tool. It works really, really well just to give you some uh, standard statistics. Now, if you want to go all out and go a little bit deeper, you can always upgrade uh, the tool itself. But as you can see, you get some good statistics that you can go out and find top active people in your niche, which is really, really powerful in itself. So that way you don't have to go to Twitter, dig around and try to guess and guess and guess. So one more strategy that I want to talk about before I end this video is that if you want to use the tool that I showed you earlier, find a very, very strong hashtag, use it. And then a couple uh, days or a couple weeks later down the road, you can go to this specific website, enter that hashtag in there. If it's a unique hashtag, and you can track it, see how it's going, if it's working out, and then you can actually see who that hashtag has reached. And then you can use the same method, find the top contributors of that hashtag and go at it. So hopefully this helps you and make sure that you take some action and start getting results. Please click the subscribe button to empower us to continue making more video. Thank you very much.